Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name's Pixie. If you don't follow me already, you should be. Hi, subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Twitch um, in case you're wondering. My Twitch is Pixie Fruit on Twitch TV. Today we're going to be reacting to Ethel Kane, I believe is how you pronounce her name. It's either Ethel or Ethel. I think it's Ethel. Ethel Kane's uh, album Preacher's Daughter. I do want to preface this video with the fact that I do know two songs on this album. Um, one of them being Thoroughfare and the other being Gibson Girl. Um, Gibson Girl probably being my favorite song um, in the last... I don't know, like three months. Um, I I just adore that song. I think that it says a lot about me as a person that that's probably my favorite song. It probably will be my favorite song. I'm excited to listen to the album. Um, if you're new here, um, I'm Pixie. I, I love music. Music has been my life, um, my entire life. I've always been musically inclined. Um, I've always been more inclined to like the theatrics, um, theater, drama, things like that. Um, not to say that I'm a dramatic person. I can be, I can be, but um, it's not my natural um, vibe. But yes, today we are going to be reacting to Ethel Kane's Preacher's Daughter. We're going to hop right into it. I'm going to be reading the lyrics along as I listen. American Teenager seems to be her more popular song off the album with 23 million streams, I believe is what that says. Over 23 million streams. That's, incre that's, that's incredible. I'm excited to hear it. If it, that's her more popular song, I'd like to see what people like from her. Again, mine is probably Gibson Girl. Um, you can't go wrong with that. 4 million streams, not too bad. All right, let's get into it. This is Preacher's Daughter by Ethel Kane. These curses all over my body Reminding me who I used to be Give myself up to him an offering Mm. Damn. You can hear flies in the background. When the preacher talks that man demands his silence. Hmm. And that he said shoot first and run and don't look back. Hmm. So take me down to the So take me down to the river to be. 
wow. I got teary eyed <laughs> listening to that. So I um I have a few things that I want to touch on. First of all, I love the production of that song. I I've noticed that especially when it comes to Gibson Girl, um I grew up in the South. I live in the South. I'm I I live in Georgia right now, but I'm from Alabama and I'm talking like my deep South. My graduating class was 30 people and we didn't have home internet and we didn't have public water. We got our water from a well. A lot of the reasons why I find myself gravitating toward Ethel Kane is it's so reminiscent to my childhood and the type of music I grew up on. It's almost nostalgic in a way, but it's a little bit more harsh and it's a little bit more gritty and the lyrics speak for themselves. I mean, I, <laughs> this song is called family tree. It's the intro to the album. So if this is the intro to the album, I'm in for a ride <laughs> and I'm excited. Um, I just adore it's thundering outside. I adore this part right here is what made me tear up. These crosses all over my body remind me of who I used to be. And Christ forgive these bones I'm hiding from no one successfully. Jesus can always reject his father, but he cannot escape his mother's blood. He'll scream and try to wash it off his fingers, but he'll never escape what he's made up of. The lyricism, and that is that is something about me. I can respect and I can appreciate production for what it is. But when it comes to the lyrics, I mean, that is the core of music, is the lyrics. And I have such an a, a, uh, admiration for lyricists. And if Ethel Kane wrote these lyrics, man... I don't know, I don't know, I don't want to make assumptions about the album. I would like to get further in before I start making assumptions. I want to see if it's cohesive. I don't know if these tracks tell a story, but because she she did put an intro to the album, I'm assuming it's going to be a, it's going to be a story or it's going to be cohesive. Because um, if you listen to albums and you see intros most of the time, if there's an intro track like this, and it specifically says intro, it's cohesive. So let's go ahead to the next track. Um, Family Tree was great, made me feel things, it was very gritty um, and emotional, and I'm excited to see what's next. Oh, um, no, this is not next. This is Thoroughfare. I'm trying to listen to American Teenager. I turned Shuffle off. Oh, this is... Completely different vibe. Sounds a little bit more upbeat. And there's that feeling again. Nostalgia. Damn, girl. Go 
just had to die laughing at that part. I do it for my daddy and I do it for Dale. If you're from the South, raise some hell. Praise Dale. If you know, you know. That's just fucking, that's hilarious. I love that she put that in there. Praise hell, praise Dale. Wait a second. So she was talking to Jesus in this song, though. She's saying, Jesus, what did she say? Jesus, if you're listening, let me handle my liquor. And Jesus, if you're there, why do I feel so alone in this room with you? So a little bit of a questioning faith. And that was, that was kind of, um, that was kind of like a talking point in the, in the previous song, Family Tree. So maybe I'm thinking this is going to be a consecutive album. It's going to have a storyline here. Um, I, I'm going to be honest. I didn't like this song. I, it's not that I didn't like it. I shouldn't say I didn't like it. It wasn't my favorite. I, it, this isn't a song I'm going to listen to again. I'm going to be completely honest. It's a little bit too upbeat for me. Not that I don't like upbeat songs, but this song is very like radio friendly. I like the more creative songs. So we'll see how the next one makes me feel. But that, that one was good. Wow. Completely switching up the vibe again. Um, House in Nebraska. I believe that's the next song, right? Yep, we're going in order now. Okay. Again, a whole different vibe. Ooh. Oh man, all I can, when I hear this, all I can think of is like sitting in an empty church and just feeling empty. This is going to be a rough song. And I still call home That house in Nebraska Damn, I'm trying not to get emotional here. Well, we found each other On a dirty mattress on the second floor Fuck, I'm gonna cry. <laughs>
Is this gonna make me cry the whole album? Fuck. This is a song about your first love, man. That first, like, gut-wrenching, codependent, unhealthy love that you know is just not good for you. It's your first lesson in love. <laughs> it kind of, like, sets the tone for all of your relation relationships moving forward, you know? fucking damn this song I really hope I don't cry this entire album Ethel Kane don't do this to me I know I'm gonna cry during Thoroughfare but I have my own reasonings behind that song before we get into Western Nights I, again that song was beautiful. I'm three songs on my fourth song into the album now, and I'm crying. So I am expecting <laughs> quite the storyline here. Um, I don't know. I definitely feel like this. There's a story here, and I I don't know how to keep up with it at this point because I honestly am feeling it. It's like you're growing up a teenager questioning faith you fall in love with someone it's not the best relationship and unfortunately you realize that you know you played a huge part in that relationship not being successful and i i really loved the line in the previous song um where she says you're the first one i'm not afraid to admit that i'm the one who hurt like i'm the one that I, I hurt you, basically. Like, she's, she's saying that that was the one person that she was with that she never felt embarrassed to admit that she fucked it up. And that says so much about, one, Ethel's point of view. I don't know if this is something, if this story is something she made up or if it's a lived experience, but... I definitely relate to that you know there's always that one person that you fall in love with and you're just like out of all the people I've dated or all the people I've spoke to and had a relationship with and so on and so forth you're that one person that's like I know I fucked it up or maybe they, they both fucked it up but I know my part in it and I, I want to take accountability for it and I wish that I could fix this But at the end of the day, that's just life, you know? And sometimes relationships can't be fixed. Sometimes it's just a lesson in life, you know? Okay, so let's get into this next song, Western Nights. God, I hope I don't cry. My head already hurts. said I wasn't going to pause in the middle of songs but I I have so many mixed emotions about this song and 
Oh my God, when I tell you that I can relate to this song. I just want to like speak to the person, you know, that that relates to this song. It's almost like I've been there, done that. And it's like the way you feel is, is just so intensely... And that person is not worth it. And I think this is like the part of the plot. Um, maybe where Ethel or whoever she's talking about is, is kind of looking to fill that hole. Maybe from parents or past relationships and settling for something that You know, we kind of, there's this moment in your heartbreak where you kind of lose yourself and you kind of just think that allowing yourself to be treated like this is, is love because they care so much about you, obviously, or why would they do this? It's so sick. It's so twisted because it's like you really would sit there and take that and believe it's love because in your mind that's all you've really known and that's what you consider love especially if you grew up in like a really toxic household damn this album Riding through all these western nights, excusing the behavior because you don't take that as, you, you don't believe that this is a part of that character. You don't believe that this is a part of their character. You're just excusing it and, and showing that I'm going to love you no matter what. Giving yourself up completely to this awful situation. All just to say that you love someone. It kind of resembles religion in a way, like Christianity, Baptist, whatever, however you want to look at it, Catholic. You know, you submit and love this God, right? And all they do is, is make you hate yourself and make you think that you deserve, you have to be this pure, holy, like, subservient person and if you're not then you're not good enough it's like an it's an act of control okay. blind faith please please don't love how i need you Ooh. I feel like this, I mean, this album's called Preacher's Daughter, right? So let's look at it from this perspective. Obviously, this album is about religion, but it's showing how this daughter of a preacher has been taught to love and how it's done nothing but put her in bad situations. This album's deep as fuck. Hard times now. The, the production 
it it's literally you can hear the cicadas in the background and the frogs chirping and it's just like it's taking me back to like summer nights where i would sit outside on the porch and just listen to music and the humid like in the heat sweaty and and smoking cigarettes and and just thinking about life watching the rain fall get to be happy I'm not happy I am Boys are not crazy how much a lack of a parent figure in your life can affect you. Oh, fuck. And I knew that when this song came on, I would cry immediately because... Trust no one, you said, baby, don't run, I'll take you anywhere. So I hopped right in, out of luck to spin, and at least your truck beats walking. And you said, hey, do you want to see the West with me? 
Cause love's out there and I can't leave it be I said honey, love's never meant much to me But I'll come with you if you sure it's what you need So we made off to California To find your love a driving day and night In every small town diner Saw our faces at least once or twice But in these motel rooms I sought it to see you differently Oh ho Cause for the first time since I was a child I could see a man who wasn't angry And he said it's been a long time Since I left Florida No one left to leave And no one left to love And now I met you I finally know just where I'm headed we found heaven and time Where your western sunshine met my Deep southern west And you got lost in it And yet you found yourself Hard pressed for air and sweating And you said hey Do you wanna see the west with me? Cause love's out there and I can't leave it be And I said honey, love's never meant much to me But I'll come with you if you're sure it's what you need Oh Once we reached the coast, you said, end of the line We finally reached the edge After all this time, I didn't find my love But I still made it this far without And then you turned to me and stared into me deep And said, well, maybe not Cause look at what I've got You might not be my love But baby, I doubt it And you said, hey Do you wanna see the West with me? Love's out there and I can't leave it be And I said, honey, love's never meant that much to me But I'll come with you if you're sure it's what you need oh. With all of your dumb luck Is the only place I think I'd ever wanna be
It's crazy how happy you can be when you think, ah, uh, this is my song. I feel like listening to this album is sadistic. Obsession with the money, addicted to the drugs, says he's in love with my body, that's why he's fucking it up. Uh, 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 uh. Baby, if it feels good, then it can't be bad. Where I can be immoral. Strangers lap And if you want it good Downright iconic Something they all want That only you can have You wanna fuck me right now You wanna see me on my knees you wanna rip these clothes off and hurt me And if you hate me Please don't tell me Just let these lights be All over me If it feels good Where I can be immoral In a stranger's lap And if you want it good Downright iconic Then I will show you something That you wish you had then it can't be bad Well, I can be immoral In a stranger's life And if you want it good Down right I'll come Then I should show you something That you wish you had Love me right now, you wanna love me right now, you wanna love me right now, you wanna You wanna love me right now, you wanna love me right now, you wanna fuck me, fuck me The way I would eat that song up <laughs> Oh my god, I love that song so much. Whoa.
Whoa. I guess I was right when I said it was a shift, a pivotal moment. I don't even know what to think of that song. I, I loved it. I loved it. I can't, I can't even, I have such an admiration for really dark music like that. There's not enough of it in this world, especially when it has a storyline like this. And I, I'm going to have to do research on this album. I feel like there's such a deeper meaning to this album that I'm putting, that I'm picking up on. I'm shaking like that put me through so many different emotions and in, in such a small amount of time. My cat's looking up at me in my lap right now. Like, are you good? I need a moment. Like I genuinely, I need a moment. I think I'm going to have to pause this for just a second. Go use the restroom, splash some water on my face and come back. Cause I'm getting red in the face. I'm getting hot in the face. I, I just, I don't know what to feel. <laughs> I, I need a, I need a moment. I'll, I'll, I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm like the type of listener when I listen to something for the first time, I really like to get under the influence, if you know what I'm saying. I like to fly around like a plane and then put on the music and experience it for the first time like that. Um, I'm glad I didn't do that with this album. <laughs> Because when I tell you that I would be going through some form of psychosis after hearing that last track. Um, damn, that was, that was deep. That was deep. And I, I loved it in the same sense. Um, we're gonna, excuse me. We've got four tracks left, including this one. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started again. Um, this one's August Underground. It says there are no lyrics. And I just noticed Daughters of Cain Records, which makes me want to question...
That that was beautiful. I know I said I love lyrics, but again, I love production, and that I'm sitting here looking at Ethel's Tumblr, <laughs> listening, and it all makes sense. This is totally her aesthetic. Does this one have lyrics? No. No, oh, this is like a churchy song. Her entire aesthetic is literally my childhood. Sebastian, I need you to lay down, babe. Has the story died? Like, both the tracks after this track haven't had any vocals and it's just been like church style music. Almost like a funeral. Oh, distortion. a long track it has lyrics they talk about their money and how their babies are changing while they're breathing in the poison of the paint <laughs> what I wouldn't give to be in church this Sunday listening to the choir so heartfelt all singing she's dead And she is thinking about, uh, is she dead? I don't know. God loves you, but not enough to save you. So baby girl, good luck taking care of yourself. I have a feeling that some bleach flies is talking about like the women who have lived their whole life in the church and like are going through probably the most traumatic life experiences with men who abuse their control and their power. Um, you know, they, they be a good man and then they get you pregnant and then you're basically locked in. Stay at home mom and you're not making any money. They're in complete control. And God loves you, but not enough to save you. So baby girl, good luck taking care of yourself. So I said, fine, because that's how my daddy raised me. If they strike once, then you just hit them twice as hard. I mean, if that isn't like... 
the epitome of being a southern woman you know you grow up being told that as a woman you have to be submissive and so on and so forth but then here comes your dad telling you like oh you're not gonna let no one treat you like this you know if he ever hits you hit him back it's like i watched my dad do all of these awful things that he didn't want my sister to go through and i watched him tell her what love is while showing her exactly what not to fall for <laughs> you know like i don't know
about it too hard you'll never sleep a wink at night again don't worry about me and these green eyes mama just know that i love you and i'll see you when you get here What the fuck? What the fuck, bro? He killed her. And he ate her. I <laughs> know this isn't like a real story, but like it is though, you know? Like there are people out there that have lived that life. Man, that fucking album's fucked up. <laughs> I can't believe I listened to that. Oh, fuck, bro. It's like, it's fucked up because, like, you know, you can relate. But like there are real, there are real stories like that, you know. God, that's so fucked up. <laughs> I'm crying over an album. Like <laughs> my cat's freaking out. He's like, "Are you okay? Are you okay?" He's like. <laughs> Fuck, dude. I don't even know if I want to post this now. <laughs> oh, fuck. I don't even know if I want to post this video because I'm sitting here fucking bawling my eyes out. Over. <sighs> fuck, dude. <laughs> All right, Ethel Kane, thank you so much for ruining my day. <laughs> Not ruining it. You didn't ruin it, but God, bro. That is... That is fucking dark. Oh, shit. That is dark. That is heartbreaking. That it is so deep. I don't think I'm going to recover from this album. I feel like I just watched a movie or like read a book. I've never felt like this after listening to an album before. Like, I've cried during songs, but I've never felt like this, bro. That's crazy. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me completely just fall apart. <laughs> if you have any music recommendations, feel free to send them my way. Um, I feel like everyone can relate to this album in like a very, in like a very unique way. I feel like she told this story in such a way that like, even though it's about like a story, like you can still relate to it, even though. Thankfully, we didn't have to go through whatever the fuck, however, however you pronounce this fucking song. Tomia? How do you even pronounce that?
The ninth circle of hell, a frozen lake. How do you say this? Tolomia. Tolomia. Okay. Oh, shit, bro. I think that album made me feel more than I ever felt in a church. All right, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with this. I can't. I can't go on. I can't go on. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed watching me completely fall apart and cry. Um, Ethel Kane. Oh my God, bitch! <laughs> I loved Gibson Girl. <laughs> I loved the rest of it too, but not, not in a healthy way, like in a, I want to feel bad kind of way. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. I hope you guys have a great day. If you have any song recommendations or if you have any album recommendations, feel free to leave them below. I would love to listen to, um, some of your music. If, if you think that you would like to see me react to it and also music videos um, and then possibly maybe in the future movies or TV shows so on and so forth but thank you guys for so much for watching this video please don't forget to like and, and comment it really pushes the video out into the algorithm and it's super helpful for me as a content creator who's trying to kind of put myself out there um, and if you guys could subscribe please that would mean so much to me, um, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye, guys.